Hey, FitHeads. Today we talk with Dr. Amir Rayuveni, the founder of Tatch, which is a company that helps you get better sleep through their technology where you don't have to go to a sleep lab to do a sleep study now. It may or may not be called Tatch by the time this episode comes out. Oh, well, yeah. New name. New name. They're getting a to... new name, new rebrand. We'll figure it out. But he was, you know, uh, you, did you ever do an actual sleep study? No, yet? but I no. want to. But also you have to go like schedule it and then we sleep with a stranger around I you. I looked it up. I looked up pictures of it. They put sensors like all over all of your fingers and, your and on your head and on your heart. Yeah, exactly. And it looks horrible. And it also just seems stupid because... That's not I'm how not, I usually sleep. Right. I'm not going to be sleeping in a lab every night watched by scientists. I mean, obviously that's the dream, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> how great would that be? Just have your whole life analyzed by science. Hey guys, how are we doing? Good show tonight. <laughs> Let's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, they the tap t- t- whatever this company is now called. Classically, it was called Tatch. They have these little sensors. You just stick them on your like belly and chest, and then they give you data, and then they give you a. Uh, a meeting with a real life sleep scientist. Oh yeah, that's another thing. It's not just like you through. Hi, you slept like crap. It's like, hey, here are things you can do. Right. To get here's, better sleep. It's not like here's this ridiculous sleep score that you don't really know what to do with. It's like, hey, you, you weren't your uh, the way you were sleeping affected your breathing last night. Here's three things you can do. I'm a human being, a sleep scientist is telling you. Here's three things you can do. You know what I mean? That that's that yeah. struck me as such a smart like a, a that extra step because that is like i was saying to you like that's where i get caught mm-hmm. you know what i mean for sure and the way you like the side that you sleep on also so interesting because we've heard conflicting things where it's like you definitely need to sleep on your back i'm a chiropractor and then we heard, right. you definitely <laughs> need to sleep on your side because we made a mattress <laughs> and right. so you say or i you definitely need to sleep with uh my YouTube channel auto playing videos because I'm a YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, so it was fun. We sort of grilled him a little bit about what's real and what's not. And smart guy, he had a, he had all the answers. Welcome to Total Fitness. Serious fitness for not so serious people. All right, welcome, Doctor Reoveni. So glad wow. to have you. <laughs> we were discussing pronunciation of his name before this. So how'd I how'd I do? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, really close to the original. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, awesome. So uh, let's just give our listeners a uh, rundown of what Tatch is to get started, yeah? Sure. Um, so Tatch is, is our mission is basically to make sleep medicine, sleep health uh, easy and accessible for people. Uh, we realize that there is a big gap today in understanding the root cause of the issues for why you're not sleeping well, and Touch is here to help. So uh, we combined hardware and software platform together with access to sleep specialists uh, to allow you to find out what you have, but also treat it over time. Yeah, so when you're talking about what you have, like how common is it to be bad at sleeping? Oh, wow, very common. <laughs> Apparently, between 50 to 70 million people only in the U.S. suffer from chronic sleep deprivation. Um, so almost uh, 40% of adults are not sleeping well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and almost every night uh, for a variety of reasons. It can be insomnia, uh, sleep apnea is a very common um, problem that uh, we address specifically with our solution. Uh, but there are also other uh, sleep issues. And uh, I think recently there are the interest um, in improving your sleep is, is growing uh, for the public, uh, and rightfully so, because it's one of the most important elements of your health. Uh, but people, you know, people start tracking and figuring out what you have or, or seeing some trends about their sleep, how it can affect different uh, phenomena. Um, but it's very hard to understand what is the root cause. Um, is it a breathing issue? Is it something psychological? Are there any movements during the sleep? Is it my sleep position that prevents me from sleeping well? Uh, and these two things typically were diagnosed or detected in sleep lab. Um, but you know, I don't know if you're familiar with sleep labs, but sleep labs is uh, 
pretty dated solution to to really understand what uh, um, what type of problem do you have? Are you familiar with Sleep Lab at all? I mean, I know it was it still kind of is the, the the gold standard for you know getting data about your sleep. But don't you have to like go to a sep like a lab and then it's like completely different than I don't know. Tell us about like what the actual sleep study experience is yeah. currently. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is uh, one of the most uh, you know complicated and even like inaccessible uh, fields in, in in healthcare today. Just like, or like the, the ratio between sleep labs and people in the US is one to 50 or 60,000. Uh, so it's very difficult even to find one. Once you get, once you find one, there is a long waiting list, of course, because people want to, to try it. Uh, and it's, it's very, very expensive. And uh, the experience includes going to the actual facility, spending there at least one night uh, while being watched and being connected to several uh, wires over your head, your, uh, your, your heart. Uh, yeah, it is, it is quite a, a terrifying. So I remember my father going to a sleep lab um, and he was very nervous about the experience. He, he, he really, he, he actually couldn't sleep. Uh, he slept <laughs> for maybe two hours. Yeah, this is like a kind of a funny uh, anecdote, but it, people really find it difficult to sleep. They feel being watched, they're being measured. Um, so it's a really difficult experience. Then you need to wait for you know, a few days, two weeks until you get the results. Um, so it's really a really long process until you really figure out what you have, uh, and include involved insurance and you know, very, very cumbersome process. Um, and what we do in touch is basically trying to make the, the access to this type of data, not all of it, of course, but to the type of data that you are collecting in sleep labs uh, to the public, uh, to people that can purchase the kit um, online, get uh, get it home, and then immediately get uh, get tested and get results. Uh, so this is one aspect uh, of what we do. Um, you know, trying to make sleep medicine or sleep you know, sleep labs much more accessible. Yeah, can you What's talk about the actual tech? Yeah, because it is yeah. not all those things all over your head <laughs> going to a lab. Yeah, exactly. So we actually developed like a platform that is constituted on like these like small Ooh. patches. They are wireless. They contain uh, they are battery powered, um, Bluetooth enabled, so everything is communicated through the phone immediately. And uh, and in our first version, we included specific sensors that uh, allows people to evaluate uh, if you have difficulties in breathing, for example, uh, during your sleep. So we are the only. Um, wearable in this form factor that can detect um, you know respiratory effort how much effort do you put into breathing how much uh, air is actually coming in and out of your airways uh, this is our this is unique uh, measurement that we are collecting another unique angle that we uh, we collect is your sleep position um, and also the relationship between sleep position and the quality of your sleep uh, so this is something that uh, is very difficult for people to know you know one anecdote we in, in our pilots is you know, people know that they are going to sleep on the right side. They wake up on the right side, so they think they sleep the entire night on the right side. Uh, but you gotta set up a GoPro. Them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, with the patches, you can actually see like a, like how you sleep throughout the night. Okay. Uh, uh, so suddenly you say, well, "Oh, I thought I'm I'm staying in one position the entire night." Um, now I realize I, I switch position for like 15, 20 times. Uh, where where does it go? <laughs> so it's really you know it really uh, triggers the interest uh, for many people. But the most important thing is that we can really tell you okay if you sleep on your backside you snore more, or if you sleep on your backside you have more uh, disruption in your breathing, for example. Uh, and these are things that no one else in this whole factory can uh, can tell you. Interesting. So wait, there's not just one good sleep position you should always aim to be on your stomach with your feet on your pillow. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, you know, and one, one specific example, like sleeping on your back is very good for your hips and your joints uh, because it really distributes uh, uh, the weight across uh, across your body. Uh, but on the other hand, it, it creates more difficulties in, in breathing. Uh, so people on the, uh, are more prone to snore uh, when they're on their back. Um, about 50% of people with, uh, uh, with sleep apnea has uh, more problems 
while they're on their back. So there's no one, you know, one solution that fits everyone. That's what we hear a lot on the podcast. <laughs> is that like, wait a minute, yeah. we are different. specialized to yeah, each yeah. person, and um, even in sleep, I guess that I never even thought about that. Right? I'm just always looking for the right way to do it, but it's the right way for your body. Exactly. So then, once you get the information, the data that you're, what what happens next? So that that's a great question because um, at Outer Gap, you know, with all the interest in consumer electronics and um, and trackers recently, you get lots of data and you can see trends. And then the, the, the right question is, okay, what's next and how, how can we do it actually um, act upon it? And one thing that we put ourselves for ourselves as a mission is to make our reports and data more actionable for people. Uh, the way we're doing this is, first of all, we include, we, we, you get a report immediately after the night. And in the report, we give you some tips that our algorithm produce uh, based on your sleep. But in addition, uh, you, you're able to connect with a sleep specialist uh, that works with us virtually. So you get a 15-minute consultation uh, that walks you that walks you through um, the, and review the, the report with you and prescribe a, a treatment plan for you. So you say, okay, I see that you, uh, you have problems sleeping on your back. This is a solution you might be able to try. Um, and, you know, once you... You know, once you get this treatment plan, you can now consult with a sleep specialist over uh, over a course of like a few months until your sleep is actually getting better. So we think that our the ability to reflect the data and communicate the data in a very easy and simple way uh, to users is one key element uh, for them understanding their problem and, and get, you know, acknowledging uh, what they have. But the second aspect is to connect you with a sleep specialist that can actually tell you, okay, this is what it means. And this is what you need to do next. Um, that's, such a, that's such a huge next step because I feel like with a lot of track, with a lot of wearables, whatever, they give you, they give me information. I was just telling Ali before we started, I was like, yeah, the app says I slept terrible or, or this tracker said I slept terrible, but I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> or, you know, it'll say like, well, you should try meditating. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I, I guess. Can you give us some examples of... Uh, action items like what did what did your sleep specialist tell you <laughs> um so i i like to give the example of the you know the, the position because uh, mm -hmm. i think it's a, it's a very tangible one um so sleeping on your back can create uh, some difficulties in breathing and it's something we can literally see in the report so you can see i slept 40 uh, percent uh, of my night on my back and in this position my sleep quality uh, my breathing quality was poor uh, and then the sleep specialist review the data with you and say, okay, in order to solve it, let's try to prevent you from sleeping on this position because it doesn't doesn't help uh, for sleep and your sleep quality is actually poor uh, on this position. And there are, there, are, there, are, there are a variety of like products that allows you to uh, adjust your sleep position or prevent you from sleeping on your bed that the sleep specialist can uh, uh, can recommend. Um, other things that you know we can uh, we can look at. Uh, we, we also ask people what did what do they do just before sleep. So, for example, if you have like a large meal or you're, you know, you drink caffeine, uh, so they can say, "Oh, I see that your latency. <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> you I'm, I'm feeling attacked right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't intentional. <laughs> uh, but yeah, exactly. So they say, okay, you uh, you had a, a large meal uh, just before sleep, and I see that your sleep latency. You, it took you a long time to sleep. So maybe try this for next time. And I think this the platform allows you to communicate the text messages with a sleep specialist over time and actually get uh, you know, get the feedback you need once you try those. Oh, interesting. Okay, I was thinking it was like one night kind of like going to a lab and then that's it. But it, it's like continuing to exactly. guess to, or make it a, an assumption, test it, revise, exactly. see, see what improves. Okay, that's cool. Exactly, exactly. And, and this is the basically, we talked a lot about the access and accessibility of sleep and then just the ability to get there and, and get diagnosis. This is one element that we would we improve significantly. The other part is the journey uh, toward improving your sleep. Uh, and this is typically a very lonely journey. You know, you're doing your sleep, typically you get uh, scolded by your spouse or your partner that, you know, you snore or you move or you wake up. Um, so people really feel lonely uh, in this process. Um, they don't. They feel so they don't have a roadmap. They don't understand what's the problem. Uh, 
Um, so we are there on the platform to develop. Um, it's there for you, for people that uh, are on the platform, to uh, to walk you through the entire process. And exactly like you described, you test yourself in the beginning. We offer you something, and then you test. You can test. You can uh, retest uh, your sleep after the, the treatment and see the, the progress. So it's really important for us that people will see that you know, their sleep is improving uh, objectively, uh, because a lot of the you know. Uh, uh, the parameters right now, especially even even in, in sleep medicine today, are very subjective. Uh, how do you sleep? Uh, does, you, does your spouse tell you that you snore more or less? These are kind of the metrics that people use many times. Uh, but we can actually give you data and see, okay, this treatment improve your sleep by such and such. Uh, so that's that's kind of how we, in addition to uh, reducing the bar to understanding and diagnosing your sleep, now it's also much easier to. Uh, go through this process of improving your sleep. It's a video game where you sleep <laughs> and then rack up points and level up. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah. you, well, you keep mentioning snoring. Like, how common is that? Are there a lot of snoring? People? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very common. Um, yeah, I mean, I know it from like a <laughs> experience uh, in my family, uh, but. About uh, 40 to 50 million people in the U.S. Uh, are habitual snoring, snorers. Um, and snoring is not, by itself, is not necessarily an, an indication for uh, you know, uh, poor breathing, for example, but the correlation is pretty high. Um, so we can tell you uh, if your snoring is you know, just snoring or if you also have some breathing issues uh, while you're asleep, for example. You tell that? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. That's... Uh, that's a very unique angle. So. Did I did I read correctly that the the patch actually has audio in it, so you can hear yourself snoring with the specialist afterward? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you actually in the report you get a, a snoring sample because many people find it very difficult to believe that they actually snore. Um, so we actually report. Do you have to do that to prove it to people? Like no. <laughs> <laughs> so we have actually a play a small play button where you can. Play a uh, snoring sample in case in case you, you snore. The the phone collects the, the audio information. Uh, we analyze it and we automatically produce a snoring sample in case you snore. And we actually tell you how how many how many minutes, how much time uh, you snore during the night. So it's another important piece. Um, so even though not necessarily it's a health issue, but it's it can be like um, you know, an issue for like a couple sleeping together. Uh, so it is also important to treat that as, as part of your lifestyle and, and your life quality. Do you find that couples are interested together? Like it's rare that people try it and then don't want their spouse to do it too. So we found, you know, during the you know all the the pilots and market studies that we've done recently, uh, we saw a lot of interest of couples. First of all, testing together, which we found very very interesting um, to kind of see how you know how. I sleep compared to you, and, and, and what is your sleep quality? Um, so it made us think, and this is something that we, we are considering in the future, how to really bring the, the partner more into the experience, uh, both in terms of um, you know, helping the, the, the person to, uh, to improve their sleep, the person who suffers from any, any type of, of uh, chronic sleep disorders. Um, so, uh, and maybe also to create some type of like a mutual uh, experience around the, around the sleep, uh, sleep uh, like why do you see how you sleep and compare to, to each other, uh, which we find very interesting. And are you tracking sleep stages too? I know that's a big thing with wearables, but is that necessarily a part of your sensors? Uh, currently not. Uh, in order to find out, this, we are now focused on, on things that are related to breathing, position, snoring. Uh, and in order to, to uh, understand those, uh, this is not the highest priority, but this is something that we're working with, uh, in the future. We already uh, detect uh, sleep and wake uh, pretty accurately. Um, so it's something we already have uh, integrated in the, in the platform. The next step is to uh, find a, a more uh, fine uh, section of your of your night, basically. Are sleep there... stages important? We've uh, we've heard conflicting arguments. <laughs> um, you know, it is important. I mean, obviously, there is uh, there is science that shows that you know deep sleep helps for uh, for uh, recovery and uh, 
and for really uh, for admins to be uh, more prepared uh, in the in the morning. Uh, but it's really hard to um, to find what what is the cause of, of not having like the, the right amount of uh, of deep sleep, for example, or REM sleep. Um, so there, there are lots of uh, diff different reasons that can affect that. And I think this is where like you know people find it difficult to say, oh, how actionable is this thing that uh, in fact. So this is why we prioritize things that are much more actionable, like breathing, like sleep position, uh, snoring, uh, that we can detect and, and let people know what they what they can do. Um, and we're going to expand the into sleep space in the future. Okay, so you're trying to improve like position, breathing. Do you also take into account sleep debt? Are you trying to get people to sleep longer, or is that not one of the measurable things that you? No. Have? We, we report how long did you sleep and we compare it to, you know, benchmark and we can actually, you know, uh, if you tried a specific intervention, we can tell you, okay, this now your sleep uh, duration is, is better, your sleep latency uh, is shorter, for example, and this is thing we can definitely say. Um, but sleep depth is something that, that is something that is more uh, continuous and we are not uh, looking at this right now. And when you're talking about restfulness throughout the night, is there like an average or under that you're aiming for? Or is that also personalized? Yeah, it's also something personalized by, I mean, I'm looking at like uh, how much you move uh, during the night, et cetera. And um, you know, there, there are some um, specific sleep disorders that are related to movement, uh, to like, excessive movement during the night, and uh, specifically of the limbs, uh, like restless leg syndrome, if you're familiar with maybe that one. Um, so sometimes it comes, um, um, so it is reflected during sleep in, in periodic uh, leg movement. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we can, uh, with a high level of rest, restlessness, basically, uh, we can uh, relate this to, to this phenomenon, for example. And this may or may not be a self-serving question as someone who eats a bunch and chugs water before going to sleep. Is it bad to be waking up and using the restroom in the middle of the night, or is that also <laughs> just like personalized, whatever? <laughs> I mean, again, it, obviously it's personalized. Um, but obviously, you know, once you wake up during the night, it, it disrupts your sleep. So you sleep less, it takes you time to, to fall asleep again. Um, so this is something that is, is less desirable, of course. Um, it's interesting to say is that sometimes people wake up to, you know, to go to the bathroom but they think that it's related to uh, you know, just the fact that they drank uh, before, the, before going to sleep. Uh, but interestingly enough, it might be related to some breathing uh, event that woke them up, for example. So if there was an apnea event that woke you up ever slightly, and then, okay, you feel that, no, okay, now I need to go to the restroom. Uh, so these are things that we can see in, in patients with sleep apnea. And again, it's something that we can, we can tell you. Uh, we can tell you also how many times did you wake up during the night, which we typically know, but I think it's nice to uh, to see and how long uh, were you uh, were you standing or walking around. Um, so these are also things that uh, we can say. Have you caught anybody sleepwalking? Uh, not yet, <laughs> 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 but many many of the of the people that try it, we you know woke up several times uh, during the night. Okay. So. Uh, is, have you ever told someone that they're late into latency was too fast. I've heard that if you fall asleep too fast, that means you're, you're too you're tired. Deprived. Yeah, you sleep yeah. deprived. I think less than less, I think less than five minutes is considered, you know, on the uh, yeah, sleep deprivation, basically, you know, just put your, yourself on the bed and you just fall asleep. Um, so people think it's, it's a good thing, but uh, typically it means that you're too tired. Uh, so like a healthy range is typically between five to 15 minutes um, of latency. Uh, longer than that might also uh, be related to, you know, insomnia and other uh, phenomena like that, and we can definitely look at that as well. And is there a way you tell people how to prepare for a TACH test? Like if I'm going to a lab, I have to put on my weird public pajamas and <laughs> try and sleep normally, but when it's at your house, like, is it just do it whenever? Yeah, and that's, that's the beauty of it. I mean, this is, uh, you know, we want the test to, to be taking in the, the most natural, convenient uh, uh, way. Um, so yeah, just like like every other night when you, when, uh, 
you have the patches, you can put them on, uh, turn on the app. It's about like two to three minutes uh, setup time, so really, really quick. Um, and then you get all this information and the consultation with the, the sleep specialist. Right. Yeah, I would just want to make sure I was like capturing the most average night possible, you know? <laughs> Yeah, we actually hear it. I mean, people are uh, concerned that this is like the perfect night, but but there is no reason to wait for it. I mean, typically, I mean, there is of course night to night variability, and we will support this in the future. But you know, we just need to uh, exactly like a sleep study. Um, it's just, you know, we need like uh, to look at uh, at least four hours of, uh, of your sleep uh, in order to understand if you have any breathing issues or any you know specifically uh, specific issues in your uh, position, snoring, etc. And are you under the belief that you can sleep more efficiently? We've talked to people on both sides of this where um, I want to use the bulletproof Dave Asprey as an example where he thinks that like the methods he's using will allow him to sleep less time and be just as recovered. Whereas we've also heard that that's that's BS and it's impossible to do and you have to put in the hours no matter what. I was curious your take on that. Uh, so improve, basically improve your sleep efficiency during the time that you sleep. Yeah, um, to be more recovered with less sleep. With like less than six hours or just with the same amount of hours? So one example would be, and this is actually something that we do look at, again, uh, looking at the breathing uh, aspect. Uh, so for example, if you have if you stop breathing during the night, and this is basically uh, part of uh, sleep apnea, if you stop breathing multiple times during the night, even if you sleep seven hours, uh, you can wake up uh, tired, uh, for example. Um, so treating the, the breathing issue, uh, helping you breathe, be breathe, breathe better during the night, make your sleep more efficient, basically. So within the same seven hours, you can wake up more refreshed. Uh, so there is an element of being more efficient uh, during your, your sleep by, for example, improving your uh, breathing quality, improving your sleep position, etc. Um, if, if you ask me if you, you, know, you can be super efficient, like sleep four hours and you'll be as recovered, the answer is probably not. But I think within the same amount of time that you typically sleep, uh, we can tell you if your sleep was actually uh, uh, good or effective, effective or not, and how you can improve it. As a sleep guy, can you, I mean, I know, have you seen anything in like, uh, I mean, I know you haven't really, you have quite the impressive waiting list. <laughs> uh, it's 7,500 for the fit heads. So, <laughs> over 7,500 now, right? Now, now we have 11,000 actually. What? Whoa. <laughs> Everybody wants to sleep with you. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you've done a little, you've, you've tried it a little bit. You've tried these out. You've, you've gathered a little bit of data is sort of what I'm getting at. Have you seen anything on like a macro level? Whereas like, man, we never would have noticed this by getting people individually. But now that we've measured, I don't know, whatever X number of critical mass. Uh, wow. This is a huge thing that no one's talking about. Is there any, anything like that? Any, any viewpoints? That's a good question. Or is there anything that you've seen that... Um... Micro level too. Tell us about some weirdos. Yeah, tell us some weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, macro, micro level. I think our algorithm was a little bit surprised by the amount of uh, people that are using, uh, you know, noise machine uh, during uh, sleep, mm -hmm. which was interesting. And it uh, actually <laughs> disturbed our algorithm pretty uh, pretty significantly. Uh, our next version is going to be much better. Yeah, I listen to snores <laughs> while I sleep. I have a, a snore generator, so that'll mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> so this is something that we found interesting uh, we also found actually you know asking about like macro train i think we found that you know people are waking up to the bathroom much more often than we anticipated i think this is something interesting that yes we normal mm. yeah yeah I think breath I also or bathroom? Thought, sorry you said breath or bathroom to the bathroom yeah. bathroom oh yeah yeah so actually, people are, are waking up to, uh, to the bedroom. Uh, Better than the alternative. 
a return for moisture. <laughs> yeah, probably version three of this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's so something that's uh, interesting that we discovered. Um, yeah, I think we have two anecdotes. So, uh, obviously, if I wake up feeling crappy, even though I was asleep, that's a sign I'm getting bad sleep. Are there any other signs that aren't necessarily related to, or that you wouldn't know about that that would indicate you're getting bad sleep? Um, so yeah, waking up like not refreshed is definitely a sign. Um, you know, dozing off during like uh, after lunch or you know afternoon. Uh, it's also typically a sign of, of uh, not rested sleep, uh, not enough rested. Um, so this is another thing. Again, snoring might be, you know, uh, loud snoring can be an indication of problem with breathing that leads to, uh, to poor sleep. Um, you know, a lot of movement during the sleep also can, can tell you. And this is typically the spouse or the partner, uh, if you have one, uh, can tell you. And this is interesting because many people would get to, you know, to a sleep lab or to a sleep evaluation because their spouse is telling them, you know, you're snoring too, too loud or you're, you're moving. And so these are other symptoms uh, that can be indicated of, can be indicated of poor sleep. Have you ever made the connection between like sleep temperature and sleep uh, positivity? Uh, no, we haven't yet. Uh, we haven't done it in the platform yet. Uh, this is on our, on our our own uh, product waste, yeah. <laughs> feature list. Um, is it possible to, that you could be getting bad sleep and not even know it? Like this, this is for all the like power employees out there that are sleeping four hours. Like, ah, I don't need it. I'm special. I'm different. I mean, th that's that's a uh, uh, one eye of like you know getting poor sleep and, and not knowing about it. But actually, many people kind of getting used to the, the tiredness or the, the level of sleep that they are um, and think it's normal. So one example, you know, we, we interviewed so many people uh, before and during the you know, product launches and, um, you know, one, one person said, you know, he, he attended the, one of the conversation with uh, his colleagues and they, they said, oh, I just had a, a child recently and I wake up like, you know, four times, five times a night and I'm exhausted, etc. And that the other person said, I'm doing it every night. He didn't realize that you know waking up five times during the night is, is abnormal. It's something that he, he, he shouldn't shouldn't happen. And you know, just by this conversation I realized this is something that uh, is not normal and then he got uh, you know got tested and realized that he has sleep apnea, for example. So um, you know people get used to this, but I think it's very similar to other health uh, and wellness uh, issues like you know not eating healthy so you're just getting used to this uh, habit and um, you know you think that this is the, the reality but you, know, you can definitely uh, get better at that we've had some different people on tell us different things are important <laughs> Sleep debt. We had one guy talk to us about sleep debt for the entire episode. We had another person talk about temperature. We had another person talk about, um, or I've heard about uh, your stages. circadian rhythm. Yeah. Or your stages is a big one, but the circadian rhythm was like a big, a big one. They said, you know, just whatever you do, just get to bed at, at the same time, wake up at the same time. Um, what What are you as a <laughs> As a doctor, <laughs> what would you prescribe as your like best practices? You definitely do. If nothing else, do this. So I'm not a medical doctor. I'm, I have a PhD in electrical engineering. Okay, so. that counts. You're still a doctor. Uh, so I can prescribe treatments, um, but I think that they're all you know, it's all true. I mean, sleep staging is true, and temperature uh, is helpful. Um, and you know it's similar to you don't have like one recipe or one menu that fits everyone so there's also not like a single um element of your sleep that you know we're improving again one of our users uh, tried to say like i'm keeping like super strict sleep hygiene you know uh, not reading anything before night which is another important tip and it's recommend to people go to sleep for like you know eight hours but still, I'm waking up not refreshed, and you know he keeps, you know, the, he can't get to to the, you know, the, the sleep that he wants to. Um, so not, not 
not all the every, not everything is related to you know, sleep hygiene or other mm -hmm. things that, that, are, uh, that are out there. Um, and, and everyone takes you know an angle uh, at, the, at the sleep quality. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we look uh, we look primarily at uh, your breathing quality, which people typically overlook. But again, like 30 million people in the U.S. suffer from these breathing disorders uh, during uh, during sleep. So it's, it's a highly uh, underdiagnosed uh, condition in sleep apnea. Uh, so we look at that and try to solve it for uh, for the people who suffer from it and, and don't know about it. Um, but I think the nice thing and, and, and the beauty of that is it is, it is a platform that can expand uh, into other domains. Um, I showed you those like uh, in wireless patches. You, you can put them basically for future applications anywhere in your body and you can collect information from your legs from your chest from your wrists um, and, and by that we can expand the, the capabilities uh, of, of what to look at um, and the other things of course connect to the sleep specialist can actually look at your uh, look at your data and, and analyze it uh, uh, properly and these are two elements that can actually tell you what what is important for you specifically mm. Breathe right strips, yes or no? Is it? <laughs> Breathe right strips. <laughs> they were like big in the 80s, the thing that like... The nose things. Yeah, the actually. Warm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it helps for some people. I mean, that's that's part of the thing. So some people find it helpful, some people don't. Um, so, um, you know, for example, you can say, try it and then test yourself and then see if your breathing quality is improving. There are all kinds of strips. There are, there are actually strips that cover your mouth, so you 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 can't uh, breathe from your mouth uh, during sleep. Okay. Uh, mouth taping. This is like the mouth taping. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe yeah. Rogan talked about So it. some some people can't even like think about doing this, and some people it, it improves their sleep like dramatically. Um, so it really uh, personal. I think this is what our platform allows for. Uh, now you can see this is objectively helping. Well, from like a company perspective, is are you planning on a having users that are coming to you because they're having problems or their spouses are saying there's trouble or do you ideally want to be reaching the whole population and and be preventative and so like a wider range i think in the, in the long run we, we are looking at a solution to um, to actually prevent you from from getting uh, bad sleep Sleep, and this is you know our algorithm already looking at those um, things for you. Um, but for now, we are very focused on you know, solving the, the first problem. Uh, people who are people who reported they're currently sleep deprived. Maybe their spouse tell them that, uh, or partner tell them that they don't sleep well, or they snore, or they wake up uh, too many times, uh, or they heard from their colleagues that the way they sleep is not uh, is not normal. So we, we want to help those uh, people with chronic sleep deprivation that um, you know, uh, just don't find the time, uh, don't have the resources uh, to treat themselves. And you're launching soon, right? Uh, or tell us about tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a, talking about the company. It's a very exciting milestone in the life of the company. We're going to launch a wellness uh, platform uh, just in the end of the month, uh, in June. End of June, uh, we're going to offer a three months uh, program uh, where you can test your sleep, uh, consult with a sleep specialist, get a treatment plan, um, and follow up the follow uh, this treatment plan for the three months with uh, unlimited uh, messages with a sleep specialist, um, full app experience, and you can retest yourself as much as you want. You uh, it tells that you you return the kit, you get a new one, and you get tested as you uh, as you. Uh, Improve your sleep. Um, and yeah, as you mentioned, we have 11,000 people in the wait list. Uh, everyone is, is welcome. Uh, and uh, we'll do our best to, uh, to uh, help people sleep better. Very cool. Well, your episode is coming out at the beginning of June. So let the pallies know where they can, or excuse me, Fitheads is our list. <laughs> let the Fitheads know where they can get on the wait list. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, pilot.patch.com. Uh, pilot. .p Pilot.com, very simple. The name of the company is TATCH, pilot.com. Uh, by the way, we're going to launch with a new name. Um, 
is another exciting news. It's going to be Wesper.co. Uh, but currently, people can uh, just go to pilotatouch.com and uh, uh, okay. cool. register. Yeah. And is there a reason for the switch? Um, so we think it, you know, we found it uh, an appealing name. We had some difficulties with, difficulties with the previous one. Uh, so yeah, I think Wesper is, uh, first of all, really talks to um, you know, better sleep. It sounds like a between whisper and kind of a night prayer. So we like this uh, this name. Uh, we had some you know, problems with the previous one. So we decided to switch. <laughs> um, we also, Max, Max the, the one question. Oh, yeah. So, well, I guess it should be related to sleep. Do you track at all uh, people's drinking habits and how that connects to their data? Or I'm assuming people probably, if they're using the patches, are like, oh, I think I'll abstain tonight. <laughs> uh, so we ask people if they drink uh, uh, alcohol uh, or even caffeine uh, before sleep. Um, and it's something that we, you know, the sleep specialist can look at and say, this is not good for you. Or, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we actually have this data uh, from people that report. Interesting oh. that you lump caffeine and alcohol together. They seem yeah, like so. pretty closely <laughs> disruptive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't mix them. That's for yeah, sure. oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I just mean like, um, you assume that alcohol will, will give you crappy sleep or maybe better, honestly. There are some people that are like, I, I'll i have a nightcap and it'll help me sleep better. But I, uh, after having tracked a bit, realize that's the opposite. Yeah, it is the opposite. It's actually, you know, you might be, you might fall asleep faster, but actually your sleep quality uh, becomes worse. So it's, it's more for recommended yeah. uh, for sleep. I would think the users would want to, they, I don't, <laughs> I mean, obviously everyone lies to their medical doctor. I mean, <laughs> it's the <laughs> smartest thing you can do, but I would think that if you want like a tracker like that, people would want to try everything. You know, how, obviously I want to get my peak sleep, but what if I have a bunch of ice yeah, cream before bed? Or what if I'm trapped? Yeah, exactly. So do you, are you sort of encouraging users to mess around that way? Or are we just trying to like get peak, peak? <laughs> to just like get the, the, be the best sleep possible. The, yeah. the <laughs> best sleep. <laughs> really reminds me of my child right now. It's just like, I'm so strong. <laughs> um, you know, obviously, we, we, we try to help people to get uh, much better state than what they have. Um, and, and we are focused, I think that the, the combination of like real data and looking at unique angles of your data, give it all this information to a sleep specialist uh, who will help you get like a better sleep. <laughs> <laughs> if you need a if you need a new logo, I think we just do a screenshot. Of, <laughs> we'll take a silhouette of your kid and just like it's just like a whisper. <laughs> I'm so I'm so strong. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. This has been really interesting. Yeah, yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks so much for I'm having about me. About to here. jump on that wait list. <laughs> you should pilot.touch.com. Yeah. All right. Thank you, and uh, thank you to the Fitheads. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please rate and review. It helps us out a whole lot. And we'll see you next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.